All right, praise the Lord. <clears throat> Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center here in the heartbeat of heaven, Dallas, Texas. And we're really thanking God for a beautiful day today. It's December 1st. And it's beautiful outside, sun shining, and the weather's just so warm and wonderful, and uh, everything's nice. So we're slicing and dicing and really bringing it forward in a, in a premier way here. And uh, just had some wonderful things that uh, I've been, you know, researching and looking at, uh, just continuation of my optimum level of pristine, you know, God faith uh, in the realm of the God salvation and, and all those points of salvation, you know, victory, you know, prosperity, uh, health, uh, deliverance, right? And the saving knowledge and grace of, of the Lord Jesus Christ so much uh, is in that whole uh, vein of gold there. And um, so I like to keep the faith going, keep the, keep the God education going, uh, continue to transform and re my uh, soul and uh, renewing a right spirit within me and keeping my consciousness full of uh, and populated with uh, the blessing of God's uh, holy word and uh, making everything else absurd. Amen. And uh, just giving, you know, letting, letting God counsel me with the scriptures through the prophets through the holy men of God in the in the uh, old and new testament uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable profitable second Timothy 3 16 15 and 16 and so uh, we're just moving right along on this threshold of knowledge and this overwhelming uh, wisdom that God breathed and is breathing uh, into us uh, to uh, bring a reformation or a reformation uh, of the godness out of our born again spirit and causing the old man to be uh, be become a new uh, with everything that we have to do hallelujah and so um, you know God says in Revelation behold I make all things brand new uh, hallelujah so I was just looking at some things today um, in first chronicles 22 11 it says now my son the Lord be with thee and prosper thou. Look at that. It says David talking to his son Solomon. Thou my son, the Lord be with thee. See, a lot of people have the Lord with them. But they're not conscious or they're not educated. They're not uh, assimilating in the fullness of what God brings. Uh, and springs forth. You know, now my son, the Lord be with thee. A lot of people have God. but And he says, and prosper thou. See, one thing to have God there, but then to have his prosperity, to have the mindset, to have the consciousness, to have the awareness, to have an open uh, soul, you know, mind, emotions, intellect, will, uh, open up all the windows, gates, doors, and and portals so that uh, the sunshine can come shining through. And people need to move from... Uh, the Lord with them to the Lord with them and prosper them. And he says, and build the house of the Lord as he hath say it, said unto thee. So so we're in the building process. Uh, we are being built as lively stones, uh, being fit into the temple of the Holy God. And also, uh, you know, it's all about building his work. Uh, you know, because we know God is the one that promotes in Second Chronicles 25, 8. It says, for God hath power to help and to cast down. So though God has the power to bring the help that we need to get us to the title deed of everything that is good from God. And this is really what everybody really has been looking for. You know, uh, Romans 8, 23 said, not only so, but we ourselves, we who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly see groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons the redemption of our bodies romans 8 28 or romans 8 23 excuse me there were groaning and you know and the earnest expectation looking for uh our full adoption you know growing up in full maturity in our adoption and realizing um everything that god has uh bequeathed to us and fashioned us for and prepared us for to uh, lavish on us uh, the redemption and everything the redemption has purchased for us 
And that's a wonderful thing. Isn't it? And you know, I really like how the um, New Living Testament describes Romans 8.23. It says, we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of the future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released completely from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights. See, there it is. Give us our full rights as adopted children, including the new bodies as he has promised us. So, uh, again, growing up into the full rights and, uh, and, and the full privileges that comes from becoming sons and daughters of the Most High God. I mean, so we just uh, we go with it. You know, we go with the flow of things. You know, kings went in the flow of this dynamic. You know, Second Chronicles 27, 6 says, Jotham, Jotham grew powerful because he ordered his ways before the Lord. Jotham grew powerful because he ordered his ways before the Lord. And talk about Uzziah in Second Chronicles 4. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm not sure what book that is but uh, well, I know the book but I don't know the chapter head I know it's verse 4 and 5 uh, give me a moment on that let me grab it for you I believe that's 2nd Chronicles 26 so uh, or go with that in verse 4 and 5 it says and he did what was right talking about Uzziah he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord just as his father Amazia had done he sought God throughout the days of Zechariah who instructed him in the fear of God and as long as he sought the Lord, God gave him prosperity or success. So there it is. You know, it's all in seeking God. It's all in seeking uh, his God's purpose in one's life and growing up into full maturity and, and uh, you know, uh, growing up and in, in, in operating in all the rights and privileges that God has bequeathed to us. You know, even Josiah. In Second Chronicles thirty-one twenty-one, is this? Um, uh, excuse me, Hezekiah. It says, uh, and it, and in every work he, that he began in the service of the house of God, and in the law, and in the commandments to seek his God, he did it with all his heart. So he prospered. So we got to get all in. Uh, go for it. Go for the gold. Go for the uh, blessing. Uh, go for the inheritance. Go for the growing up in full maturity. Grow for the. Uh, uh, our rights and privileges and status uh it's all gratis we just have to uh pursue it but he, he pursued the work and the service of god in the house of god that's so important a lot of people put that aside uh, they think that that's just a sideline thing they think that's something that they could just uh, pick and choose and do or do not do but i'm afraid it doesn't work that way you understand uh, in seeking God, we're seeking his service. But he did it with all his heart. And so what do you do? He, the Bible says he prospered. There it is, prospered. You know. And so uh, that's why a lot of people can't find their delight in him and get the desires of their heart because they've really committed their way to the Lord to trust him and allowing God to bring things to pass. Uh you know, uh, they're not waiting patiently for him. Uh, you know, because those that wait on the Lord, they'll inherit the earth. Uh, the, the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in the abundance of peace. So it's all there. Um, daily, God is giving us a deluge, a downpour of the benefits that he has uh scripted for us because we are sons and daughters of the most high god we are adopted into the family you know psalm 68 19 blessed be the lord who daily loads us now a load is a load you ever seen a truck with a big load on it well that's the kind of load we're talking about daily loads us with benefits we have a benefit package that's out of this world it's amazing and god's not withholding anything from us psalm 84 11 for the Lord God is the sun and his shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will withhold from them that walk uprightly. Will he withhold from them that walk uprightly? He gives grace and glory. Grace and glory. Those grace and glory, you know. Uh, he gives us uh, the opulence, the overflow, the abundance. He gives to work in and through and out of. Uh, 
and they're working right now to bring his uh, most amazing provision to us. Uh, and for those who are keeping covenant, those who are in contact with God, those who are walking uh, in his will and doing his purpose and, and are working for the building of his church. So, and even the gates of hell will not prevent those sons and daughters of the most high. And God will script them and underwrite them, and God will make sure and sanction them. He will make sure that their lives is full and overflowing and abundant. You know, John 10, 10. I've come that you might have life, have it to the full, till it overflows, to have, to have the abundance. See, it's right there. We pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Let his will be accomplished. Let his word be accomplished. Let his word be at work. Let his word, word manifest as advertised. Hallelujah. You know, Psalm 132 and uh, 12 to 18, if your sons will keep my covenant and my testimonies, which I teach them, their sons shall also sit upon your throne forevermore. For as the Lord has chosen Zion, he's desired it for a dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here will I dwell. For I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. Look at that. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation. Her saints will shout aloud for joy. And I will make the horn of David to grow. And I will prepare a lamp for my anointed. And his enemies I will clothe with shame. But upon himself shall his crown flourish. Look at that. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? Thank you, Lord. And you know, it's all there for us. Uh, the fullness of everything is there for us. It's working, it's operating, it's functioning, it is actually uh, capitulating and manifesting itself. We just need to be hooked up, linked in, synced up with what God is making happen. You know, God's wisdom is speaking to us. You know, uh, Proverbs 8, 17 to 21, I love those who love me. Those that seek me diligently, look at that. Those that seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me. Riches and honor are with me. Enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yes, better than fine gold. My revenue than choice ever. So we're talking about fruit here. We're talking about revenue. Yes, I will traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of justice that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth and I may fill their treasury. So God's the one who said, I will cause those who love me to inherit. God said, I will cause those who love me to inherit and I will fill their treasuries. There it is. I mean, it's, it's in black and white. Hallelujah. Just don't be downhearted. And don't be uh, arrogant. Just don't be proudful and just look and disdain, look with disdain upon what God's trying to say and how he's trying to bring it. A lot of people don't mind God saying what he says, but they don't like how uh, they are uh, instructed to position themselves to receive the blessings of manifestation of God's unlimited resources. See, uh, you know, Proverbs 28, 25, he who is of a proud heart stirs up strife. But he who trusts in the Lord will be prospered. Trust in the Lord will be prospered. You've got to go through something to get to something. You've got to let God filter your life and get everything out of it that is uh, superfluous, everything out of it that's just not, that's a weight, that's weighty. Anything in it that uh, would, uh, would, would reroute you away from the blessing, his anointing, his animation. And his intimacy, his fellowship, allow those things to be removed. Hallelujah. God can remove those things. God has weapons to wage war with and to move these things. Uh, with the fire of his jealousy, he could do this. Hallelujah. Just read Psalm seven twelve. I won't read it right now, but. You know, Psalm 1, uh, 31, 6 says, I hated them that regard lying vanities, but I but I trust in the Lord, see. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, there it is. God is our stability right now. It doesn't matter what this corona conundrum, this, you know, pandemic uh, political stance and uh, the outlook is from the governments of the world. Look. God says in Isaiah 33, 6, he will be the stability of our times, a wealth of salvation 
wisdom and knowledge and the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Look at that. When you fear God, there's the treasure. There's a wealth there of salvation that comes to us to inform us in, in a form of wisdom and knowledge. And he is the stability of our times. I mean, he is stable. Everything else might not be able, but he is stable. He's no fable. He's quite able to be God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, so, uh, thank you, Jesus. You know, so we got to stay with the wisdom, stay with the teaching, stay with what God's word says, you know, uh, be uh, focused. Uh, Proverbs thirteen fourteen: the teaching of the wise is a fountain of life. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, fountain of life, to turn aside from the snares of death. So it's a fountain of life. You know, it's not so much about just accruing things and amassing money and, and uh, creating fortunes, but it's also about receiving life and life to the full uh, and operating out of the fountain of life, which is so uh, amazing. It's just, uh, it just bespeaks of glory and uh, such amazing uh, uh, overtures toward us. It's just mind-boggling. I mean, what kind of prosperity are we talking about here? What, what kind of parallel levels can we see in the scripture uh, that gives us an indication of what God can do? Well, again, the Old Testament flowed in prosperity like no one's business uh, in the Old Testament. And, and yet we live in a realm where there's better covenant, better promises. We just haven't seen the realization, the manifestation of because the emphasis on prosperity has not been there. But we really need to emphasize on it now. Since we're living in a changing world and diverse uh, things are happening and, uh, and our lives are shifting, we need to have the shift mode pressed in our being and be able to follow and flow and, and uh, and be refreshed and be uh, undergirded and uh, built up by God. And you know, uh, probably one of my favorite scriptures again is, and I've memorized it, Acts 20, verse 32, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to what build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. See, that's, that's it right there. God's word of grace is able to build us up and give us that inheritance. So we've already, it's already ours. It's already ours. You're not trying to get to prosperity. Prosperity is trying to get to you. It's already yours in reserve, already laid up on your and in your account. You know, we're talking about Ephesians 3.20, you know, not to him who's able, <coughs> able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine or even dream of according to the power that's at work within us now. He's the one that's up to getting things done in our lives. And so what he's trying to do is trying to um, uh, get us to faith, you know, get us to believing and get us to receiving. You know, Ephesians 3.12, in him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. See? And... Uh, you know, he's making plain the mystery, the administration of the mystery, the administration of grace is working, uh, uh, the power that's uh, unleashed by God to uh, uh, reveal the boundless riches of Christ, to reveal the boundless riches of Christ. Like I say, we're already rich. You know, it's made plain in Ephesians chapter 1, and... Uh, as we read it in verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, hath, that means already, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. There it is. Ephesians 2, 6 makes it plain. And, uh, you know, if you look at the King James translation, it says, And he raised us up together made us made us to sit made us to sit made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ God made us to sit in Christ hallelujah there it is because we've been brought near by the blood 
and uh, we're qualified now to sit with him. That's right. And, you know, he's the head of the body and we're his body. So all things are ours. Uh, you know, you know, Jesus even said it himself, I appointed to you, I appointed to you, Luke 22, verse 29 and 30, I appointed to you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me. The kingdom has already been appointed. So let's just take a look, see real quick, and see what, you know, God has done in the past. If you know what he's done in the past, you know what he can do in the future. God is the same yesterday, what, today, and forever, right? In First Kings 747, I love that 747 jet. Uh, Solomon left all these articles unweighed. Solomon left all these articles unweighed because they were so many. Look at that. Because they were so many. Remember that. Because they were so many. That's how God works. With so many. With much, much more. Much, much more. Solomon left all these articles unweighed because they're, they were so many. The weight of the bronze could not be determined. And then David talks about the fortune that he amassed in First Chronicles twenty two fourteen. Now behold, I have taken great pains to provide for the house of the Lord one hundred talents of gold, one million talents of silver, bronze and iron, too great to be weighed. I have provided timber and stone. But look what he says here to Solomon, but you will need to add to them. Look at that. That wasn't even enough to build God's house. Hallelujah. In the Living Translation, in First Chronicles 22, 14, says, I have, I have worked hard, David said, to provide materials for the building of the temple, nearly 4,000 tons of gold, 40,000 tons of silver, and so much iron and bronze it cannot be weighed. Look at that. So in today's market, uh, if you're looking at 4,000 tons of gold, Okay, yeah, we started at 1200 but really um, gold per ounce in 2020 is around $1,800 per ounce. So, you know, you go figure, and the value of one talent of gold today um, is about two, over $2 million, over $2 million. And uh, there's 100,000 talents. And that's a little less than 4,000 tons of gold, which David provided. Uh, you're looking into about $200 billion, billion just in gold. We're not talking about the silver, the bronze, the precious stones. We're not talking about all the time it took, the unlimited artifacts, uh, people that were uh, crafting all of the things of the temple. We're not talking about the cedar beams, you know, and all of other, other the ornate things that were the decorations and all that, and the dishes and and all of the tools that they had. You know, you're you're figuring it at, to be somewhere in the neighborhood of a trillion dollars uh, by the time they got done, because as David said to Solomon, what I'm giving you is not even enough. So you're you're figuring at least a trillion and more just for one uh, temple in today's dollars think about that uh you know just for building the temple the bible says in uh in psalm 24 it says the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof thank you jesus the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof i mean that's that's just that's incredible isn't it that earth owns the earth is owned by God. Yes, it is. Thank you, Lord. And uh, let's just read it from the King James. It says, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, everything in it, and the world, and they that dwell therein. That's it. He, he owns it all. He, he controls it all. He, he can release it to whomever he will and do with it whatever he would. And we're talking about rich. Talk about God rich. How do you look what it says in First Chronicles 29, 11, and 12. It says, Riches and honor come from him. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory. 
victory and majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. You are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you. You reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand is to make great and to give strength to all. Look at that. He's in total consummate control. Yours is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you. You reign over all. Look at that. It's remarkable, isn't it? Yes, it is. And he, he owns heaven and he owns the earth. He owns it all. And we're in Christ. And so guess what? That means you and I have unlimited resources. Because no matter if someone else owns it in the natural, someone else controls it in the natural, God owns it. And he is supremely in control of it all, above everyone who claims that they own it and have it. So God can move and shift and just uh, put everything where he wants it, in, in whoever's hands he wants it, any time he wants to do so. Ooh, does that give you a different look at, must it be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits? <laughs> Hallelujah. I think it should. I think it does. Hallelujah. I mean, it's right there in black and white, isn't it? As you look at it, you know, it really is. It's um, it, it's easily spelled out in God's formatted way, and I love I love His Word. You know, Philippians two nine. Therefore, God exalted exalted Jesus Christ to the highest place and gave Him a name above all names. Uh, Colossians one sixteen. For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Hallelujah. There it is. See, and we've already mentioned um, one of the scriptures that talked about he, that he made us to sit. And, and you know, uh, if you look at the... Uh, In, in the New Kings were in the New G King James Version, it says He raised us up together and made us sit together. Made us sit. To, raised us up together. And made us sit together. Hallelujah! Made us to sit together. What? That's right. It's it's incredible, isn't it? You know, in the Faithful Version, it says He caused us to sit together. Aramaic translation, he seated us with himself in heaven in Yeshua, the Messiah. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. My, 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 my. So there you have it. We are seated, synced. We're locked in. We're tied in. We're, we are one in divine order protocol with God himself. So what's the problem? What is the problem? Why do we go by budgets? Why do we go by uh, what we have in our hands? Why do we go by what we have in the bank? Why don't we just um, start cutting loose? Some people are just methodical. They just give the same amount every week. The same amount, they, you know, and you could preach for months and still they'll sow the same amount. They never understand that God is infinite. His supply is infinite. And that he's just w w waiting for someone to recognize who they are, what he's already done, and what is already laid up for them. And, they, and, he, and he wants them to move with him in seed time and offering. And just begin to sow seeds of significance. You know, get out of that zone of a little bit. Get into the zone of sowing a lot. You know, you're willing to pay a lot for what you want. And you're willing to work a lot for what you want. But Jesus has already made available for us through his work and what he has done. Uh, and given us a blank check. And uh, allow us to decide how much we want. 
out of what he's already earned for us. You know, it's just that Luke 6.38 in the NIV version is given, it will be given, given, it will be given. You know, give, you know, is, is the same as sow. So it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured out into your lap. For with what measure you sow, it will be measured back to you again. See? What measure you sow, man. People are just content to live at a certain level because they don't want to operate by faith. They want to operate out of uh, out of the protocol of God's provisional plan of prosperity. They don't want to grow in faith and uh, and really let sink into their minds and hearts and transform them as far as who they are and what they have become in Christ and what is available for them in the everlasting flow of God's fluid uh, uh, fiduciary in prosperity. He's rich, beyond rich. And just looking for somebody to believe it and receive it and then walk in it, flow in it, and operate in it and out of it. I mean, there's a whole new lifestyle waiting people that are willing to step in and step out of the old and into the new, uh, which God has provided for you. You know, in, in uh, Romans 6, 4 and 5, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. The, the, old, the old way of doing things, the old way of receiving things, the old way of operating is, is dead, okay? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. But like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk, look at this, in the newness of life. Newness, newness, freshness, revital, revitalized, refreshed, renewed, new, uh, brand new protocol, brand new order, brand new way of living, brand new way of, 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 of enjoying life that, that is synced the glory of the Father. In the glory of the Father. Oh, yes. God, I believe that, don't you? That's what got me motivated. That's what's got me activated. That's what's got me so excited. The Word of God has done it. Hallelujah. And we need to realize the greatness of His power. Uh, Ephesians 1, 19 and 20, to what is the greatness of His power? Behold, I give you power to get wealth, it says in Deuteronomy 8.18. And what is exceeding greatness of his power? To us word, us word, us word, to us word, who believe. See, that's the key, believing. To us word, who believe according to the working of his mighty power. When you get to operate, you begin to sow seeds. You begin to get sync with him. You work out a seed time and harvest. You begin to sow uh, seeds of significance. Then what his, his amazing, exceeding greatness, his power that works uh, in a mighty way uh, will get in the mix with you. Break all the devil's tricks and they give you uh, uh, and actually open the veins for you to get your fortune. You're never going to get it just by working. What God has for you, the unbelievable wealth resources he has available. Working gets you to getting your seed and your seed then begins to sow into the rich soil of of God's substance by faith and then you operate out of more and more get out of a meager get out of a little bit get out of just uh, over broke j just barely enough you know all those things and it puts winds in your sails and then you move forward and prevail in mighty and glorious ways well I guess that's it for now uh, short video but uh, short and sweet and nice uh, if you want to sow seed right now, get it in the ground and become renowned. Or watch God uh, change your whole format, change your whole itinerary, change your whole s the setting of who you are, the seeding of who you are, and, 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 and get up and just begin to let God catch you up in his rapturous resources. Then uh, what you can do is just go and sow a seed at DallasRevivalCenter.com. There's a PayPal me uh, hyperlink. Click there. Uh, and you can also go to, um, on your smartphone, Zelle, the Zelle app, Z-E-L-L-E -L -L -E app. And uh, just enter the uh, enter the code 469-335-3356, 469-335-3356. And you can digitally sew that way. Or go to our P.O. Box, uh, Dallas Revival Center, P.O. Box 271-636, Dallas, Texas, 75227. Uh, and uh, 
make your checks and money orders payable to U A W O M I U A W O M I. You might have uh, not done this yet, but it's just a tremendous way to get get going, get kick started, get this thing kicked into high gear. You might be in uh, in debt. You might be in uh, in liability loss. Uh, there might be things hitting you right now that are, are very profound. You, you might be in bankruptcy. You might be in the middle of a marriage, uh, uh, trying to sort it out and, and you know get the upper edge and this type of thing. Well, listen, uh, those seeds are powerful. Put, it was seed basically is just putting your resources in God's hands. It's like giving it to somebody in the stock market that knows the stock market or somebody that knows how to work with the advantage of, of the tools available in finance, but hyper extend it into a, a, a genius mind that has that owns it all and everything and governs it all and, and works in and through it all, how it thread it out for you, man, and make it happen for you like it's never happened before. I challenge you. I, I'm challenging somebody right now to sow that $1,000 seed. You know you need to sow it. Because you owe it, there's no way you're going to be able to come through. You're not going to get through. You know you're not going to make it on your own. But I want you to hire God. I want you to put God, uh, give God a work order with that thousand dollar seed. Put a demand on heaven. Put a demand on uh, your account in heaven. Put a demand on Christ, and watch what happens. If Christ moved the way He moved on earth. You you've read it all in the Gospels. He'll move his same way for you, but he's looking for somebody that will move and activate and orchestrate by faith, faith and trust in him or what he can do. So you're taking of what you have, a little bit what you have, and believe me, $1,000 is nothing to God. And you are sowing it directly into God's heart and mind and sowing it right into his wheelhouse of genius uh, power and, and, and his force and his ability. God will catch it up and turn around just like he did with those few loaves of fishes when he fed 5,000 people. There you go. God bless you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye for now. Steve Sterling saying out, over and out. Bye-bye.